Thing. Order! Order! And you are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Save yourself, man! All right, we're going to move on because we're going to talk about Labour MPs and are Labour MPs taking bribes, James? <laughs> um, look, um, yeah, it, my personal view is I think it's right for MPs to sort of petition government for more funding on behalf of their constituents and for their constituencies. I mean, that's like 101 for any MP, regardless of the party. Um, all I would probably caveat that is, I mean, I think you have to be quite cautious if you're going to roll in behind Theresa May and support a Brexit deal that independent experts have said will leave people's living standards £2,000 a year worse off. And then, and one thing I would say is if you are going to walk into those lobbies of Tory MPs and essentially prop up a Tory Prime Minister, you have to be prepared to go on a doorstep. All right, well, you, you've taken the, um, the, the sentiment a bit further, but yes, let's have a look at this tweet from David Lammy, Labour MP. This is in response to yesterday's story in The Times that some Labour MPs were being wooed to vote for Brexit with offers of investment for their constituencies. David Lammy says, more fool them. Socialists, my ass. Cowards and facilitators. History will be brutal. Is that a bit over the top? No, it seems fine. Um, <laughs> the, the, the great irony here is that Labour Brexiters, which isn't all Labour MPs, but is perhaps more of them than we think, basically agree with Theresa May. It's just no one can quite admit this, right? Theresa May, the trouble with Theresa May's deal from her party is the Irish backstop. And the reason why they don't like the Irish backstop is because it ties, it ties us into a customs union, potentially. What, lab, what Labour Brexiters say they want is their Brexit. Why they say they don't like Theresa May's deal is because it doesn't tie us into a backstop. They shouldn't really need a bribe. They basically agree with it. If they'd, if they'd come clean, we could have an honest I, mean, I don't think that's necessarily accurate reflection, because I think if you're, Labour Brexiteers are quite a small bunch, and there's probably a silent including group. The, including the... It's in well, the, no, manif there's it's the a, manifesto. There's, let me finish. There's a, well, I think you're conflating two separate things quickly. One's a group of Labour Brexiteers yep. who are very strongly... Uh, I mean, you know, predone to Brexit, per se, as an issue. As then you've but got you're, that, but that you're, the but manifesto. Committed, and then okay, a, Labour's committed to delivering Brexit. Uh, look, our manifesto at the last election was quite clear. That, Jeremy you know, Corbyn said that, said that we should trigger <laughs> Article no, 15 the, the day after the you, vote. The reason this is really important is because you're conflating two separate things. OK, you've got an issue of a, a rump of Labour MPs who are very pro-Brexit, with a group of more sort of silent Labour MPs who nominally that remain, a but, but their constituencies involved. are not. And yeah. therefore, they are in a situation where they have to meet the needs of constituents coming to them uh, uh, and, right. and demanding Louis, that they reflect their views. Louise, do you, do you agree with, with, with James? Are they being bribed, these Labour MPs, or are they doing this um, completely open, the, with open eyes? The, the context, James, is different to the normal... It isn't normal business at the moment. The country is sick to the back teeth of the fact Parliament doesn't seem to be able to get its act together one way or another. The likes of Aaron Banks seem to be fined for doing all sorts of dodgy things. It's like our trust... Dodgy. 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 Not, not dodgy. Don't not use dodgy. the word dodgy. Not dodgy. Potentially, you know, that it doesn't look great. Reptilian. Lots of people, agree. lots yeah. of people, you know, lost their jobs because of austerity, <laughs> because of the banking crisis. It's like the country's been on a journey here. And meanwhile, then, Labour MPs should not be seen to be taking advantage of a national crisis around Brexit. It's not normal business. It's not fighting for a hospital in the normal way. I completely agree with you. I think that's my you point. Know, I, I, I just I said that I think, think that, that... Well, you sounded know, like you were defending the likes of Labour MPs. I was, I was, I was, I was, I was doing exactly time, what the DUP have done, thing. which is held the government Hugo's to ransom. I was conflating two groups of Labour MPs, which I think was unfair. Because there's one group that are, are adamantly uh, pro-Brexit, and there's a group there fact, that are trying to respond to the You're saying, in fact, the party is badly split, is your point? In the meantime... There's a small group of Labour MPs. Okay. Right. Of Labour, in the meantime, uh, MPs, this is so. not Dave. just about MPs. In mm. the meantime, mm. this is also about voters. And millions of Labour voters are Brexit. They're not in a minority. And, in fact, I would hope that all Labour MPs would be Democrats. And, therefore, they would be trying to democratically decide that they're going to go along with what the majority of people in this country voted for. So what's disgusting about this is the idea that the only way you can get anyone to change their mind is to bribe them. <laughs> right? I would hope that it might be the case that you might actually have a bit well, more... Well, win over with uh, argument, uh, you mean? Yeah, <laughs> that might be good. <laughs> but it, but it also do misunderstands, it. as you... <laughs> usual, it misunderstands the nature of the Brexit vote, because it thinks, oh, we'll pass down a few crumbs to constituencies. That'll keep those kind of left-behind, poor Brexit I voters. Agree. They'll be happy. It reminds me when the Welsh um, uh, metropolitan types basically said, oh, Wales won't vote leave, because we get more money from the EU mm. than anything else. People don't want that Ankle. kind of condescension, bits of money from central government. I don't government. think there's going to be very MPs doing this, by the way, Labour MPs. Well, hang on, well, well, which be, What do you mean that you don't think they're going to be doing I what? I don't think there'll be the, the bribes accusation. I don't think there's a large number of Labour MPs who are going to be doing this. I think but it's all right for the 
ones who will. I didn't say it was all right. I said you have to accept the fact that late MPs of nature are going to lobby petition government for extra money. So that's just like 101 of politics. Right. But the fact, and, and they do have different issues in the Labour Party, they're not all the same. But I don't think this is true. I don't think there's going to be a large number of Labour MPs who will do this because I have well, to justify on the doorstep before those we, decisions. Before we get to the numbers of those Labour MPs, let's have a listen to Tom Watson, Deputy Leader, being asked all about this. If there are financial bribes for constituencies, yes, it, like a, it that, would be a bribe. It would be a bribe, it? and it would be bribe. wrong. But I, I don't think any MP would take a bribe like that. I, I suspect what John Mann is saying, and maybe got his words jumbled there, is that the reasons why so many constituencies voted for Brexit is because of the economic divide and the opportunities that people in those particular areas have. And that's an issue we all need to be concerned about. But after the Brexit uh, negotiations are over as well. Tom Watson there. James, I mean, a lot of these Labour MPs, this group, um, I think it was about 13, 14 of them who voted against in the end. Um, and I think another 17 abstained. And I'm talking about the amendments earlier this week in terms of uh, testing the temperature in the Commons. But a lot of them have been having talks with the government. They defied the Labour whip uh, because the Labour leadership asked them to vote for the Yvette Cooper amendment, which would have given uh, MPs more time. Those eight shadow ministers who abstained really ought to have been sacked, shouldn't they, as front benches? Look, I mean, OK, so on the 14 MPs vote against, you had Kate Hoey there, who was a prominent But campaigner. I'm talking about shadow ministers. Yeah, and the shadow ministers, look, I mean, uh, my memory, it was a one-line whip, I believe, which is like, that's the, if you're there in Parliament, that's the way you should vote. Because and, they hadn't persuaded. Uh, I mean, look, I don't know the movements of those Labour MPs to tell you right now whether they were able to vote that day. If it was a free-line whip, they would have been there, and if they'd vote against, they would have been sacked, as it has on future occasions. But I know, I'm going to bore your viewers of what whipping means, but essentially <laughs> we're talking about... Oh, no, don't bore them. Yeah, but it's an abstract thing, but it, the one-line whip tells them the way to to vote and if MPs are able to make that vote they should go <coughs> in that direction if it's a free line whip they must be in Parliament and they must vote how they're told and if they don't then they've broken the whip and they get sacked do you That's think delicious. is Jeremy Corbyn's view privately that the best outcome in all of this would be for the Prime Minister's deal to pass with the help of a few dozen Labour MPs I don't think that's. Uh, I don't think that is what. I think Jeremy's sort of like you know reluctantly hoping Theresa May gets this the other line. I think what he's doing is very clearly he's been proved right in the last few months of all the big calls on Brexit. To be honest with you, but particularly he didn't take part in that spin exercise orchestrated by Number Ten, which was to get everyone around there for a photo. It was clearly what it was, and now he's trying to extract from Theresa May, um, try and get her to move towards his position, which is to take no deal off the table. I mean, I think that's what he's clearly trying to do at the moment, and I think that's a fair what? position to do as a Labour leader. He's got to fight the Labour share and the Labour uh, uh, share of the economy, which is working for jobs for, uh, first Brexit. And right. Can I just, since you actually talked about the whipping arrangements, it was a three-line whip for the Cooper Bowles amendment. It wasn't a one-line whip. Oh, I was saying. <laughs> so should they? So well, no, but the, and that's fine. But should should they I have been aware, should they have been disciplined then on that basis? I mean, look, I mean, I think, it, I think it's a matter for Jeremy Corbyn. Traditionally, if you've done those things, that's what happens. But it's a matter for the whip, to, um, the chief whip to do, and because old Jeremy Corbyn is the honest truth. But traditionally, if you do break the free line whip, you do go. Right. And in terms of what Jeremy Corbyn might or might not want, I mean, he's now agreed, Hugo, to go through the door and talk to Theresa May. Was it a mistake to say no in the first place? Could he have actually pushed his view of Brexit, which was a permanent customs union? Well, is that his view of Brexit? It probably is. I, I have a degree of sympathy for, for Labour ministers who, who can't follow the, the leader's line on, on Brexit because they probably don't know what it is. I certainly don't. It, it, it doesn't quite change. It just remains foggy all the time. He, he insists that a second vote is on the table, but that doesn't mean anything because nothing... Not, what is this table? Nothing else is on the table. When, when would we even get to it? He says he wants Theresa May to rule out no deal. That is precisely why she wants to make a deal with him, but he rule out making a deal to rule out no deal. The whole thing is nonsense. All he wants to do is wait to see what she does so he can disagree with it, so he can disavow responsibility for it, which has been his attitude since the beginning of the Brexit campaign. I mean, the whole thing... Sorry, I watch this show and I obviously clearly follow politics and I just can't impress enough it's like, you just, I just want a grown-up to arrive and take this over and sort it out. You know, no idea what the Labour Party stands for or doesn't stand for. Why don't we just ask them as individual MPs what they... Really, I mean, they, they go were, on they the Today programme, but, said, they go, but, but then the they come up with this motion, Hugo, which they all hide behind. Yeah. Ditto, then you've got the, the Tory party that seems incredibly split, with actually some people in the Tory party probably just taking it to the brink because actually they don't really care whether we get Brexit across the line or not. It's just like Rome is burning. The homeless people on the streets is out of control. People in poverty is getting worse and worse. It's just these things drive me insane. Uh, Whilst actually... Really? The two major political parties just cannot get their act together one way or the and other. And I think that's the point. You know, what has happened is both parties are split. 
And the, even the idea that she's trying to bribe people with a deal which everybody hates, which many people hate, even though now people are kind of reconciling themselves to it. But on the no deal thing, it is important, of course, that you have the opportunity to walk away. And nobody believes this idea that Corbyn said, I'm not going to go and talk unless no deal's off the table. I mean, the big thing about Brexit is that we have to leave the EU and the Labour Party have been utterly hopeless in betraying the wishes of Labour I, voters. I, I have no that. faith in the Tory party to deliver on this. They've been useless. Right. I can well, get all that. Yeah, but it's just that as we're talking about Labour, I don't think they should either be bribed, but I do want them to actually sit down. I don't want them to be sacked if they didn't vote in this. I do want it to be clear mm. to Labour voters what the Labour Party stands for, James. one way or another, so we can decide whether we're going to vote for you or not, because yeah. it's not clear at the moment. Look, to be fair to the Labour Party, and you know, politician, you say Labour Party split, I mean, Parliament split, the country's split on this issue. I mean, as notorious for that. What Jeremy has to do is to unite not only his party but the country as well. If he wants to be leader of the prime minister, a leader prime minister of our country, he's got to win a, a, a general election. He's got to build a coalition. That will mean he'll have to have people who voted remain and people who voted leave. He's now, got to have some principles. Yes, uh, he has got principles. To be fair, he has been very clear from the start of what his positions are when it comes to Brexit, and that's what he's defined as a jobs first Brexit. All right, we're going to look at something else because this tweet has come in from Adam Fleming, a reporter in Brussels. Um, at a meeting of ambassadors in Brussels this morning, the UK's permanent representative in the EU, Sir Tim Barrow, objected to Gibraltar being called a colony and its status as controversial in the EU's legislative proposal to give Brits visa-free travel after Brexit. Is this what happens when you ask to reopen the negotiations? I mean, they're objecting to this language. Are they right? Yes. I mean, why, why, would, why, would, Spain not, why would Spain not do this? Why would, why would they not make a fuss? Why would the EU not wish to have concessions? It's like, we talk, we talk about this as though it's, it's abstract, as though the reason why Parliament's struggling and the parties are struggling is just because they're useless. Sure, they're useless. That's not the reason. The reason is because it's a, it's a square peg in a round hole. It's, the country has been set an unanswerable question. And every time we go on about, oh, the will of the people, this, or we, we must do what the, what the people have asked for, all that's doing is avoiding the fact that this is undoable. There is no way of doing this that is not pulpable bad and, th and they are tying themselves in knots trying to find a way to do it. I mean, Claire, the, not the footnote bad. says Gibraltar is a colony of the British Crown. Um, people are going to use that. People are going to rightly. I don't object to Spain saying whatever they want. There will be fights. But to say that this is undoable, I mean, that's the bit I object it's un to. It's undoable well. No, it was. You can do anything was, badly. No, no, it could have been doable if it had been argued How? for do properly. It. Go on. At the, no, at the beginning, I, I, I really can't waste the time now. But I honestly think I could have led the negotiations <laughs> if I'd have gone in on the first day right. better. On that, because what's I would have believed means, what's in it. Because I would have been there. On that, yeah, no, we're going to say a low Irish bar. <laughs> Email me now for answers on Irish border. I can <laughs> well, tell you Well, you may yet see Claire Fox leading these negotiations. Right, we're going to end the Brexit discussion there. Now, Labour MPs in Brexit supporting areas are being warned not to do any deals with the government to support Theresa May's deal after the Prime Minister was accused of trying to bribe members in coal mining communities by offering a package of investment for their areas, although Downing Street has denied it amounted to cash for votes. Michael Crick has been in Blythe in Northumberland to ask the local MP and former miner Ronnie Campbell if he might be tempted by such a deal. Blythe on the Northumbrian coast. Taking bribes could be fool's gold, Labour's national chairman said today. But could former mining towns like this help the government clinch a Brexit deal? <laughs> former miner Ronnie Campbell, Blyde's MP for three decades, has long opposed EU membership and for many years voted side by side with Jeremy Corbyn on Europe. Do you think Jeremy Corbyn voted Remain in the referendum? Well, there you are. You, you never know them things, do you? <laughs> are you suggesting that uh, your leader has been misleading us? If I, know, if I know Jeremy Corbyn, I think he voted to leave. He did? I think he did, yes. Mr Corbyn insists he voted Remain. And this morning, the Brexit debate was still raging around Ronnie Campbell and his constituents. If you're saying well, not, uh, no deal's not on the cards, that's music to the ears of them as negotiating right. in Europe. Yeah. Because they're no, not, deal, they're no, no, we're not going to leave with a deal. So there's a, there, just, there you are, Mrs. Just Mayor, voted, there's a crap deal. If you just voted leave... And that's what we've just voted against. The so so you, you think you should keep, you've got to keep the possibility of no oh, deal yes. oh, to, yes, to, to, to make sure it's, 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 it's a negotiating tactic, It's a good really. trade unionist. I would always keep me Trump card. This week, Campbell defied his party and joined government MPs to stop a Commons amendment to delay Brexit.
He denies being a traitor, but the next day was seen with a senior Tory. I mean, afterwards, you were seen patting the government chief whip. Oh. Was that... Was that uh, I was, ask, his side, really? I was asking the chief whip what the, what the trade unions had getting out of Mrs May when they went to see her. That's what I was doing, and he was telling me some good stuff. So, more rights for workers, perhaps. And there's a local reason Ronnie Campbell might back the overall May deal. An empty factory in his constituency, which the MP is keen to reopen. The businesswoman Heather Mills, former wife of Paul McCartney, has got plans to reopen this site as a vegan food plant. And Ronnie Campbell, in recent weeks, has been talking to government ministers, urging them to cough up around £5 million to ensure that this project can go ahead and create around 500 jobs for his constituents. When the site's closure was announced two years ago, it was a bad blow to local people. The suggestion is that he'll only get the money if he votes with the government over Brexit really? instead of with Labour. What do you think? Uh, what, is that a good enough deal? No, definitely not. I don't think so. <laughs> but it might create lots of jobs. Well, I hope it does, but still, though, I'm thinking uh, Brexit's a bit of a, a no-go. And so you think Mr Campbell should... Uh, break with Labour on this and, and vote uh, with the government. Well, why? Why not? And then he might get five million for the factory down the road. Well... Is well, that a deal worth doing? Well, well, yeah, probably. He should do what he actually thinks or believes is right for his constituents within this particular area. And the area needs employment. And, and, no, and no bribes? And I don't. Hopefully, no bribes. <laughs> 500 jobs? You'd be, uh, you'd be the hero if you could uh, secure that. You'll have to vote for Mrs May's deal. Is that, oh. is that on? <laughs> well, it's bravery, isn't it? Uh, yes. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, Let's I'm be not blunt a, about it. I'm yes, not, but I'm not, not for personal I'm game. I'm not a politician who could be brave, you know. So I think Mr Smith can probably put you down as a, as a possible, possible stroke probable. Bravery? No, I don't think. No, <laughs> make it go. No. No, that, right. I, I, if you come along and says you're getting the Every money... Every man has his price, and yours is, <laughs> yours is about five million, I think. 500 jobs, yeah. <laughs> In America, it's called pork barrel politics, giving congressmen goodies for their districts to secure their votes. And as party discipline crumbles on both sides, it may spread here. Well, with me now, Grace Blakely from the New Statesman and Anna Oppenheim, who's part of the left-wing group Another Europe is Possible. Grace Blakely first. Do you think the Labour MPs thinking of backing Theresa May's deal rather than a second referendum are, as David Lammy, Labour MP himself put it, cowards and facilitators? Well, I don't think that they, their members or their constituents have very much, relatively speaking, to gain from supporting Theresa May's Brexit deal. Because really what, you know, most Labour members want, what most Labour MPs want and what most kind of working people across the country would want is uh, to see a kind of Labour government that would um, be able to kind of end uh, austerity and reverse all of those horrific signs of kind of uh, degradation, deindustrialization that have arisen, particularly in the north of the country. But what most Labour members and Labour voters want is a second referendum on the Brexit. Labour members are united first and foremost on the policy that was agreed at conference, which is to first t uh, go for a general election because they know that a Brexit of any kind delivered by Theresa May uh, would be damaging to working people in this country. And they know that the best way to deliver the kind of benefits that we need to reverse the cuts that we've had over the last eight years and to really start, you know, making our economy work again is to get a Labour government. Yeah, but they don't want a Brexit at all. I mean, 88% of Labour members don't want... But their priority is a Labour government. Um, Anna Oppenheim, if you could respond to that. I absolutely agree. There are priorities of Labour government. We know that a majority of Labour voters vote for Remain, and that's especially uh, young voters who very enthusiastically campaigned for Jeremy Corbyn in 2017, often for the first time in their lives. Um, I can see many of them so not having the same enthusiasm uh, to go out and vote campaign again if the Labour Party delivered Brexit. Well, you've got to respect the uh, manifesto, haven't you? And you said you'd respect the referendum in the Labour manifesto. So you can understand why Jeremy Corbyn's reluctant to get behind a second referendum, can't you? The promise of Corbynism was that it will massively democratise the party, that the members would get the final say over what the manifesto is. 
Um, and we know that a huge majority of Labour members don't want Brexit to happen because we know that Brexit is a right-wing project and there is nothing for, for the left for it. I think what the party is trying to do, and members support the leadership in attempting to do this, is to make sure that we aren't, you know, that the, the, um, they aren't dividing the, the country, that aren't dividing their members, their voters, on this kind of sociological open versus closed dynamic that's really emerged since Brexit, and are campaigning on what their slogan is, which is, you know, the many versus the few, which is people who live off work versus people who live off wealth, and trying to bring people together around an economic agenda that, you know, they, uh, Jeremy Corbyn um, thinks that he can deliver. And personally, I, I think that that is the right strategy. I haven't particularly supported Labour. Labour's eating, Brexit though, strategy. It? Uh, it's not really, no. It, it's uh, delivering the kind of politics that Jeremy Corbyn was delivered to, uh, that was elected to deliver, which is about, you know, uh, reversing austerity, which is about uh, improving living standards in this country, you know, getting the economy back on track, so that we aren't seeing the kind of industrial decline that was highlighted in that clip. The, isn't the people's vote using the excuse of Brexit to topple Jeremy Corbyn? There definitely are people who see this as an opportunity to change um, Labour leadership to make it, to divide the leadership from the members, but also a vast majority of us are people like me who campaign for Jeremy Corbyn, but who also campaign against Brexit and simply know that Brexit uh, can only stop the left from bearing our, our promises. Because if people lose their jobs, if we see communities being devastated, if we close the borders, that's not how I want the Labour government to be remembered. Let's call a spade a spade. Would you rather have Theresa May's deal, no deal, or no Brexit? I mean, would I rather have Theresa May's deal, no deal, or no Brexit? I think what matters most to me is the government that's delivering the Brexit, right? So I can conceivably no, but see... but answer that question first. Well, I can conceivably see... Have... I would not go for May's deal or a no deal with Theresa May in charge because she would use it to deliver the kind but of bargain no based deal, in Singapore-style no model that would charge. decimate uh, the working people of this country. But no deal with Jeremy what, Corbyn in charge? Well, uh, you know, what matters is who's in charge. You've got the potential of a no deal, which could create initial shock to demand and then longer term and some structural changes to the economy. What would be needed in that context would be a big stimulus programme aimed at absorbing that initial shock and also transforming the nature of economic growth over the longer term so that we have a just, fair and equal economy. But which of those three options, and you haven't answered the question, which would you rather have if Jeremy Corbyn was in charge? If Jeremy Corbyn was in charge, then I would prefer him to be able to negotiate a deal, of course. And that's consistently deal. been his policy, yeah. A new deal. Do you think the party's going to split or is the sort of legacy of the 1981 split still too haunting to people? I know to you're honest, too young to remember To be that. honest, I don't see a party splitting because, as I'm sure you both agree, the priorities of Labour members, Labour MPs, are around having a Labour government that can deliver on a socialist programme. Um, so hopefully, um, I strongly believe that most members and MPs will stay in the party. In a word, is the party going to split? Absolutely not. That's in a few words, but not many, so that's great. <laughs> Grace Blakely, Anna Offenheim, thank you both very much. Shadow Chancellor John McDonnell has condemned the government after reports emerged that some of his parliamentary Labour Party colleagues are being targeted with offers of investment in their constituencies in exchange for voting with the Prime Minister over Brexit. Speaking in Stoke after holding a town hall meeting, John McDonnell described the development as copying one of the worst elements of American pork barrel politics. We want to say that we need, we need honest politics. Um, we want clean politics. We don't want this type of politics degrading our political system. We've not had it before. Until this government got elected and gave the money to the DUP, two billion, a hundred million pounds of vote to keep them in government, we don't want our system degraded in that way. And what we're saying to government, if you've got the money, put it in anyway, because these communities need it.